back, everybody, to Ark Survival Ascended. I'm an old guy gaming in, uh, in this episode. We got a lot to get caught up on. <laughs> so, oh man, where to even start? Uh, I've played many, many hours off camera uh, just doing, you know, what needs to get done to advance in the series here. And uh, so I figured we'd start here at the sea base since I just showed you that montage of our shark pack uh, just ripping the ocean a new one. <laughs> <laughs> These sharks, you guys, are just absolutely unstoppable. Um, so, I, yeah, I have, um, it, you can have up to eight in a pack. I mean, I, I'm, I think you can have more than that, but, the, but the, you don't get any more bonus for that. Uh, but eight's plenty. In fact, most of that footage that I showed you was with seven sharks because I lost one of them that glitched through the to the world border. Um, so, you know, we took out a 145 Alpha too, so with hardly blinking an eye i mean it took it took you know about a minute or so to do it but none of my sharks were even close to death by the time that fight was over uh and you know a lot of other creatures too uh so basically what i was doing was um i was swimming on ichabod here and then i had soldier eight following me and then seven following eight and then six following seven and five following six etc and it worked out pretty good i mean I, I didn't have too much trouble at all in terms of you know their pathing and anything like that so um, I, I like that, you know, better than having them all just follow me because then they tend to, to get a little more messed up. So let's see, what do we got going on for breeding here? Um, I now have a, uh, the breeding sharks here are, I have two mothers with a melee, um, uh, whatchamacallit, my brain's not working, mutation, melee mutation. And then they just had with um, that wild 150 father. Oh, I guess I haven't showed that to you. Yeah, I, I, I um, tamed a wild 150. So I just mated him with these two mothers and one of their offsprings got all the stats. And so um, this is our new father with a melee mutation. Um, and honestly, I don't even, I, I'm going to keep, you know, trying try to get make them a little bit stronger. But, you know, all the sharks that I took with me have basic saddles because I don't have a blueprint. And none of them are mutated. They're, um, they're all imprinted. But none of them mutated, and we just had no problem whatsoever. Um, so if we can find, you know, a little bit nicer blueprint, because, you know, when it comes to the ocean stuff, it's the East Sea Cave is the hardest part of, of anything in the ocean. I'm not worried. We could probably go do the Western Sea Cave right now if we wanted to. Uh, I'm sure we could, and we probably will. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll even do that in this episode. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but the, the problem that I'm running into is I cannot seem to find a decent level of Basilosaur. I've killed probably a dozen Basilosaurs in the ocean, and the highest one I came across was 100, and that's not good enough. You know, I need something, I want something higher than even that for, you know, my own personal cave dino. We, we got that level 90 or 85 or whatever it was over there, but um, yeah, I want something bigger. So anyway, um, I'm still continuing to look for a, a high-level basilosaur, but yeah, we've got a whole bunch of sharks. I'm starting to kind of even run out of room in this pen, so I don't know. Uh, I tamed this really cool blue-looking um, Pelagornis for gathering, specifically for gathering organic polymer. I took him out for 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, and got 2,000 organic polymer. So if you guys didn't know know of this already, the Pelagornis is the go-to creature for organic polymer um not only do they gather it like crazy but they also have i think like a 75 percent weight deduction on it or a 50 percent or something so yeah definitely a good pre uh, creature for that uh so anyway let's see i think that's all we need to do currently at the sea base uh, i've got a bunch of spare sharks too which is a good thing because if they're going to glitch through the world on occasion right uh, so all of these guys any anything from nine on up is just kind of a spare shark waiting in the wings here and then all of these critters over here are our original wild critters. None of them are imprinted. And um, don't tell them this, but I don't need them anymore. 
<laughs> uh, so yeah, and I got the bass over here at the moment. Okay, let's go back to the main base and a few things to get you guys caught up on over there. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. Um, I have... This is... I, I think I've already showed this to you. This is my berry army. Uh, the ultimate plan for the berry army, uh, army is the ice cave. But what I've been doing is I found out after the last episode that if you go into the swamp cave with no clothes on uh, and just the gas mask, the Arthropleura will not break your gas mask. And that is absolutely the truth. So what I've been doing is I've been going into the swamp cave, uh, running it, you know, a couple times a day on uh, my berries to get them leveled up. And I've been finding just crazy good, um, well, I, I forgot to actually take that stuff off of you. Crazy good loot. So here's a, a few clips of what I found. So yeah, among um, some of the best prizes, look at this shotgun, you guys. Almost 500% damage. Uh, 864 flak leggings, and that's from a blueprint, so I can actually recreate those. Uh, I'm, I, I may have already had that crossbow. It's almost 300%. Look look at these riot boots, you guys. Over a thousand armor. It's just insane, the loot in that place. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that, and we'll continue to do that. Um, I've heard from a couple of different people that I've watched on YouTube that that is the premier place to go to get loot. Uh, it's a relatively, considering the quality of the loot that you pull out of that place, it's a relatively easy way to get it. I mean, I'm not saying the Swamp Cave is e easy by any stretch of the imagination, but, uh, you know, it's a lot easier than, say, doing the Ice Cave for loot. And um, I can I can run it in about 20 minutes, you know, get through the whole thing on one Baryonyx. You know, just keep a little bit of fish in the Baryonyx to keep it healed, and, oh, that's nice. And, yeah, so I'm going to continue doing that um, and um, just continue getting that really, really good loot. I did also, in a sea crate, got this pretty decent um, apprent or, or blueprint apprentice harpoon launcher, which is cool. Hopefully we'll find something a little better than that. But what I really need, well, there's a lot of things I really need, but what I really need is something better for our sharks, a better shark saddle, uh, which I don't have at this point. So anyway, let's see here. Um, we have uh, new mutations on the Argents. So I got a bunch of Argents now with this cool looking purple color. So this bird is Concord. I still have Mojave too. So I've been uh, leveling Concord up. Concord now has the all the health, stamina, and weight of Mojave. Um, but he's still I'm still working on getting his melee up. Uh, so, yeah, working on those. I think I have three mutations on the Argentavis. Let's go look at those real quick and the other critters that are in here. So, let's see here. Oh, I just got this newly mutated uh, Baryonyx here. And um, it's got it's got a stamina mutation, which is not really important for the berries, but, you know, it changes the color, you know, makes them a little less plain than they are, so... I'll keep this in one and continue breeding because, you know, stamina doesn't suck. And I'm not breeding berries for boss fights, so it doesn't matter. You know, I'm not trying to maximize stacking mutations. I'll just take whatever I get and it'll be good. So, yeah, all my birds are this really cool, you know, purple color now. And they all have two health mutations and uh, one melee mutation. And then uh, I'm still hanging on to a couple of the older birds just for their colors more than anything else. But I've, you know, I've had to cull uh, quite a few critters, too. Uh, for Therizinos, we're doing pretty good. Our father here is, um, yeah, th these guys are being bred for bosses, so I'm not allowing any mutations until I get a base parent. I finally have a base father. Uh, I don't have, I don't have my um, binoculars. Let me, let me go grab them real quick. Okay, so our father has uh, 45 points in health, which is good. Um, 
I don't care about stamina, but it has 46, and it's got 39 in melee, which is okay. I am still on the lookout for a wild Therizino with a higher health score, but if I don't get it, I'm just going to, you know, start start with these guys here. The mothers um, have a lower health, so they're not base yet. So I'm continuing to try and get, you know, my base pair to actually, you know, start the next stage, and that just hasn't happened yet. I do have a mutated father uh, with a melee mutation, as you can see. Uh, so it's got 41 points in melee, but I don't want to breed mutations into the base pairs. You, you don't want to do that because of the, you know, the, the limit that you have on them. So I'm just holding on to this one until I get the base pairs, and then we can start, use this one, and we can start to breed a melee line. Um, so these, let's see, she's just another base mother, and this is just a backup of the father. So this, this guy is the same exact as his dad. I always like to keep a backup dino just in case, you know, just for the hell of it if something happens. Uh, normally I would just cryopod the backup, but obviously we can't do that. So, I think that gets you updated on where we are with the breeding. I continue to breed the berries. Any any babies that pop out at 217 just get eight. Uh, get eight, you know, for uh, for XP. Because um, all of these are, are base 217. So that way, when, if I see something that pops out at 219, like this one, you know, then I know it's got a mutation without even having to claim the baby. And, yeah, okay. So I guess that gets us caught up with where we are with the breeding so it's coming along pretty good um like i said if I, if I can just get a decent level bachelor then we're set for ocean stuff um we, we've got our shark army and we're ready to kick ass with that <laughs> um, but we have a little more work to do here you know with uh with our land army our therizinos in particular Let's see here. Okay, so I think the plan for today, uh, I said in the at the end of the last episode, uh, I erroneously said we only had two more land caves to do, but we actually have three. We still have to get Artifact of the Pack, too. The problem with that cave is you can take a Baryonyx into it, but you can't get it back out. Uh, I mean, at least not past a certain point. So I'm trying to decide what to do about that. I have a few options. Option one is to bring take the Sabres in there, the ones that we currently have down at the Artifact of the Hunter Cave. And that's probably what I'm going to do because I think I can get the sabers in and out. Um, if you're not already familiar with this, there is a a choke point partway down into that cave that only certain small dinos can go through. A berry cannot go through it, but you can jump around it, but you can't get the berry back out of it. So that's so cats are one option. The second option is to take a pair of berries in there and just leave them in there permanently. Make sure they have plenty of food and they can guard each other. Um, or the third option is, I do have cave building turned on, not necessarily for the purpose of building inside caves specifically, but you know to build like little outposts outside the cave like I've been doing. I could maybe try and build a ramp system so that I can get the berries around that. Um, that's, an, that's another option. I'm still pondering that though, because in, in a sense, that's a little bit cheaty to do, I think. Um, so I don't know. I, th I think what we'll do, at least for our first time running it, because it's certainly not a cave that I would want to run over and over again for loot like I like the Swamp Cave, because it's just a pain in the ass anyways. It's it's a harder cave, one of the harder caves. Um, So I think what we'll do is we'll probably just take the Sabres into it for the first time, and we'll see how things go, and then, you know, decide what to do from there. Okay, so that being said, um, look at, look at my armor rating, you guys. I have over 3,000 armor... <laughs> With all this stuff up, especially these these boots, these pants, and these, you know, all that stuff I got out of this Womp Cave. It's just nuts. Um, so, yeah, we've <laughs> got one hell of a of, of a uh, armor rating there for sure. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and gear up then to do the cave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly down to... Um, Oh yeah, I spotted an Alpha Rex in the swamp. We should try and go kill that, at, with probably with our berry army, army at some point. Anyway, I'm gonna fly down to the the lower south cave, which is right here. Grab my cats and then go up to the the upper south cave, which is right here. And we'll take the the saber cats in and we'll and we'll see how you know how that goes. So I will meet you guys at the entrance here to the upper south cave.
That's pretty nice. All right, guys, slight change in plans. I figure since we're back down here, let's let's grab another artifact of the hunter just so we have a couple of them. Uh, before because I think I'm gonna move. What the hell? <laughs> They're all in stair step fashion. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to move this whole entire facility up to the uh, the upper so <coughs> excuse me upper south cave. That'll just give us a couple. I, th I think I already have a spare one of those at home, so that gives us like three in case we need them, you know, for multiple boss runs. All right, let's see what we got here. Ooh, very... Oh, shoot. Uh, for a moment there, I thought that was a... Um, a uh, uh, Rhydia and Anthos saddle, because it looks kind of like this, but that's just a stupid packy saddle. Who gives a shit? <laughs> that's pretty nice. We'll take those. Too bad it wasn't a blueprint, though. That I'm just going to throw in the grinder. Ah, uh, man. If only that was a Megalodon saddle. But it's not. So I'm going to go grab all the, the building stuff, pack everything up on the bird, head up to the upper south cave, get the um, you know shack set back up, and then when we're ready to roll on into that cave, I'll bring you guys back. All right, guys, we are here at the upper south cave and ready to go. I got the building set back up, Concord's tucked uh, safe and sound inside. And we will jump on Putty. All the cats um, have some meat on them. And as far as I'm concerned, I have, um, I bought, I'm bringing some Lazarus chowder and some fins. I'm not bringing Scooby in here. Um, I'm probably going to take the short way to the, uh, to the artifact anyways, because the long way has a lot of underwater passages. And I don't really want to do that without like a Baryonyx. Uh, and definitely don't want to do it with a saber. So, um, but I brought that anyway, because there is at least one part we'll have to be in the water for a little bit. Um, I got my shield and my uh, sword if we have to do melee, because the last part on the way to the artifact, um, there can be mobs in there. Uh, but with this armor on, you know, we'll be fine. If we do see Arthur Plurs in there, I'll take the armor back off and put the leather on until we get, you know, to that point. Excuse me. We also have some Battle Tartare focal chili and enduro stew uh, if if we need those and some antidotes because uh, i think there might be some bats in here too I, I don't know it's been i've not done this cave in ascendant I've, I've done it oh i don't know maybe half a dozen times in arc survival evolved but this will be my first time in here on arc ascendant so everybody with me okay I'm not, I'm also not a hundred percent sure I'm going to even be able to get the cats past that choke point. So I guess we're going to find out. Um, if we can't, then what I might do is I might, um, let me think here. Um, we might go with plan B or C. <laughs> plan B meaning leave the critters in here all the time or plan C building a, um, like a ramp to get around. I think both of these places go end up in the same area, as I recall. You guys with me? Okay. Yeah, that would have just come through there. All right, any bad guys in here? I'm hearing something skittering around. <clears throat> Is there anything over here? Yeah, we would have just come down through there. As I recall, both both of these passages converge anyways. Uh, and I think the convergence is actually right here.
All right. So here's the thing. Um, it looks like Sylvester's stuck. Can you get in here? There you go. All right. I want you guys to stay passive and just stay in here because there's a big drop off here. And if those guys start going batshit crazy, um, we could lose them. That route right there, I think, is the choke point. That's the place that you can't get a baryonyx through. So let's just kind of go here. See, this, this little tree with the root was not here in Survival of Vault. Okay. Nice. Okay, so the million dollar question is, can I get a saber through here? You certainly should be able to. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Actually, is that the... I think that's the choke point. Or is it down further? I know there's there's another spot even past there, but that's the one you can't get a berry through. Okay, let's do this, and let's go back and get our cats. Now we know we can get through that one. But we're going to keep them on passive, because I don't want them bailing off the side of the cliff. All right. Oh, we got to level up too. Um, yeah, let's just keep pumping melee on these guys. You both with me? No, you're not both with me. Oh, shoot. I didn't know Putty was following me. Just trying to be careful here again so they don't go barreling off the side. Because there's, uh, there's a lot of badness down at the bottom of that hole there. Okay. Got some more bats up ahead. Oh, crap. He just, like, popped out of nowhere. <laughs> All right, you know what, though? I want to save this armor for when we have to go do that last section on foot. So we are going to stay in leather armor for now since we have the ability to repair it if we need to. All right, I think I can put the guys on neutral here. Very leggy. Okay. Right, let's take one of these. And we need to drink. Okay, now, um, I'm trying to remember, I want to say we go left, but if we go right, we get, there, there should be like a, a loop drop. So, yeah, let's go right. I think we have to do some fancy schmancy jumping though too. So let's put you guys back on passive for a second and just poke our head down here. Ooh, this is tight. Are you kidding me? Really? You can't even get a saber through here? Wow. Okay. That's a problem. <laughs> Shit. All right. Well, then let's do this. Let's go. Let's go the other way and just see how far we can get with the cats. 
That's that. That was the second choke point. Um, what is this? Oh, nothing. Nothing we care about. You know what? I should put this on too, so that way if I get knocked off or something. All right. Well, let's see how far we can get this way then. Um. Oh, we can't. Yep, that's a dead end. I think. I think maybe a loot crate can spawn in this section. Maybe I don't know. I just don't remember. It's been a long time. Okay, well here's this is what our strategy is going to have to be. Then we're going to have to leave the cats here, and we're going to have to pull the mobs back to the cats. So. Let's get back down here. This still irritates me, like, to no end, because this cat should be able to get through here. There's no... There's just no reason for it, for the hitboxes to be larger than the way they are visibly. Um, this is going to be a bit of a choke point, too. Is that crystal that I can break to make more room? It is. Don't need that extra weight. Okay, well, then you stay passive. I don't want to put them on neutral, all of them on neutral because they might try and path out of here and go somewhere else, right? Um, so those two can be on neutral. And you stay passive. Okay, let's proceed. I don't know why Wildcard does that. That's just so irritating. Make it so you can't. Oh shit! I uh, can't get your your mobs in. <laughs> Is he coming through? I also don't like the fact that they're just all of a sudden materializing <laughs> out of the floor or the wall or whatever. That scared the bejeebus out of me, man. All right. We might have to deal with this guy. Where did... There he is. Okay, we got him. Uh, yeah, you know what? This is the crossroads I was thinking of, where I think if we go right, there's a loot crate. If we go left, it continues on to the main area. Huh. Okay, so let's see. What's, what's their game plan here? Let's, let's go right first. him out of our misery. Likewise. Thank goodness we have an almost 500% damage shotgun, eh? Oops, wrong button. If I pull this out, this might... Yeah, my shield... Comes out automatically. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to have to do this much of the cave on foot. Sure would help if it wasn't so freaking laggy in here, too. Uh, what is that? 
Oh, it's a dung beetle. I must have hit him. Oh, are, wait, are these guys just aggressive automatically? Because they're not in the artifact of the hunter cave. Maybe they're just automatically aggressive in here. Okay, so that's where we were up there. Oh, you know what, though? If I jumped my critters down from there, then they would be past that choke point. It's just that they stay here forever then, unless we build a ramp system to get them back out. Hmm. I mean, I could always, if I need to run Artifact to the Hunter Cave again, I can take a berry in there or just get another saber. So maybe we'll do that. And we just keep them in here. Make sure they got lots of meat when we leave. And, you know, put two of them on neutral guarding the other one. And then if anything repops, well, nothing's going to repop unless we're in here anyways. And we can get all the way to that point on foot anyways without encountering any mobs. So, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. I think we'll just have the cats live here. It's a nice environment. They'll they'll like to live here. Uh, are you stuck in the wall or what? The, what's your deal? Oh, shit. That scared me. What the hell? You know, with, with stuff just materializing out of nowhere, that kind of thing is frightening. <laughs> I think he's, yeah, he's stuck in the wall. That sucks to be you, dude. Oh, he's not now. Okay. All right. I think there can be a loot crate down here, maybe. I think. But yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to, the cats are just going to live here. I mean, this is a nice jungle environment. There's light, there's food. Why not? Better than them having to stay in the, um, that stone hut all the time, like they used to have to. So we're actually improving their lives. Follow me down. Yep. All right. Very cool. So what I'll do is I will park them right up here and then we'll we'll just go the rest of the way on foot when we leave and we should be able to get back to them on foot the next time we come in with just a little bit of combat but you know with this shotgun and good armor and we shouldn't have any trouble at all with that okay let's proceed you both with me we got a a point here. And again, you know, I mean, I can also come in here and just build a ramp back out of there too. But I know that's, you wouldn't be able to do that like on an official server. So I just, I don't know. I, I part of me feels that's a little cheaty. That's just the bottom line. So I don't know that if we'll do that, we probably won't. At least I don't think you can build in caves on official server. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Make sure you guys are both neutral. Lots of stuff just popping out of the floor. Okay, that's Artho Spit. Don't know where it came from exactly. Oh, right there. All right, 
Come back over here, guys. Now, I think this is the way we go that we have to do the jump uh, to get to a loot crate. I think the place to the left is the main way. So, let us move this direction. That's a lot of bats. Well, there goes our cat. Damn it. Oh, he got back up. Nice. All right. Stay passive. Stay passive for this part. Hmm. Might be mistaken. So many different ways to go. Yeah, let's go this way. What's the matter? Oh, we're hungry. Take another drink, too. It's a bit, uh, a bit toasty in this cave. All right, there's nothing in here. Let's go this way, I guess. And we got mega babies. That's what we got these for. Yeah, I'm glad we brought the critters with us. I mean, we certainly could have done this, but it would have been just a lot harder. So let's go this way. I think this is the place where the jump is. Yeah, okay. All right, so here's the thing. Um, you guys stay here. Uh, you need to be passive. Uh, wait. No, no. You guys... I want you guys neutral. I want you passive. Okay. You guys stay put. I'm gonna... That's where we need to ultimately get to down there. The thing is... Well, I think there's a loot crate over there. If I, if I recall correctly. I think. I know the cats could easily jump this, but there's no reason for them to, so we'll play it safe. The thing is, is if there is a loot crate over here, I would hear it, and I don't, so maybe it just hasn't spawned, since they can spawn in a few different places. Is there an explorer note? Yeah, there is an explorer note. Oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. It's just the explorer note. All right, let's grab this. Still no answers as to why the Megalodons are so territorial. But I was privy to something even more extraordinary. Megalodon mating behavior. No one's ever witnessed great whites rooting around back home. So that alone is monumental but I got something even better. I know, what could possibly top watching Megalodons having a naughty, right? Having a naughty. Tracking the female. I was able to observe her for almost the full gestation period. And get this, it only lasts one week. One week? No wonder the population is so high. These are spitting out pups 44 times the rate of Aussie Great Whites. 
I should compare how they behave in captivity. Okay, yeah, so that's why we go that way. There's an explore note. There m might be a loot crate spawn that way too. I don't know. Don't remember. <laughs> okay. Let's go back this way now. And then down this way. This is the way we came, though, I think, isn't it? Hold on a sec. What's up this way? Yeah, I think we... I think we go this way. Oh, look at that. Another one. Lystrosaurus amica fidelis is a small herbivore, common to much of the island. Only about two feet long, it is not high on the food chain and eats small plant life. The island's poisonous insects seem to have little effect on Lystrosaurus. Despite being among the island's tinier herbivores, Lystrosaurus is an incredibly resilient survivor. It recovers its torpor and health much faster than most creatures, which makes rendering a Lystrosaurus unconscious a rather difficult affair. Not surprisingly, Lystrosaurus is an extremely loyal pet once tamed. It's a very fast learner, so it gains experience much more quickly than most other creatures. Additionally, its presence nearby appears to inspire allies, making them learn more rapidly as well. Thusly, Lystrosaurus is an excellent addition to any tribe's hunting party. Yeah, the, there's just a little bit of a sticking point there. Okay, you are going to have to relax for a second in order for us to get through here. Uh, where am I at? I got turned around. Oh, over here. So you have to kind of jump to get them through. There we go. I wish somebody would, would make a mod that could reduce the hitboxes on the dinos. I don't know if that's how doable something like that is. Maybe it's not doable at all. I don't know. The dead bat. Did we come this way? Yeah, you know what? I think we did go down that way. Oh, come on, Catwoman. Ugh. What the frick? Is it not? Oh. Never mind. I'm being dumb. It's my fault. Blame me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we must... We obviously went down that way because there's a dead bat up here. Okay. Oh, no. You know what? This is the way back out. Right? That's the choke point they couldn't get through. Okay. See, now I'm all bass backwards here. So... Yeah, we want to go back this way. both with me? Oh, this lag is just killing me, man. Mm. Okay, so I think we came down through here, right? Yeah, we did. Any chance you guys can unstick yourself? Probably not. Oh, now they come. You know, it might actually be a good idea. Why don't we put you on follow four or high? That way they're not right up in each other's business the whole time. Let's see if that help, helps a little bit. not 
precisely what I wanted to do, but whatever works. Come on, Sylvester. pumping health on you because he, he's the one that's not imprinted so he's here mostly for mate boost all right so that's the explorer note that we just got so let's keep going back down this way again yeah i think we go left from here because right was where we went to Jump across the thingy and get that first explorer. Note. And then maybe this way. I hear monsters. Okay. Didn't, weren't we already down here? Okay, let's go this way. Okay, we got new mobs, so now we're going. Can I shoot from their back? Oh, I can. Look at this. Get out of here. I want to kill the Artho. There we go. Here we go. Oh, shit. I kind of rushed right into there, didn't I? Okay. Are we all good? I think we're all good. Now, um, we got to go that way. I don't remember what's over here, though. I think there's like a underwater passage. You can go underwater there and it goes back over that way, as I recall. I don't necessarily remember um, if there's loot crates over there or not, though. Down with you. Okay, you guys stay there for a second. I want to say there's a loot crate over here, or at least the potential for one. I remember something about... Yeah, so you could you could jump that gap to go somewhere else. 
Uh, duh. Of course, that's what's going to happen. You're going to go somewhere else. Um, I just don't... Uh, you know what I... Hmm. I think if you go that way, it goes down to the water, like, as in a way to get out, because there's, like, cliffs down there. But I don't remember. I don't remember for sure. All right, there's some Arthos down that way. Looks like we got them both, did we? Yeah, I think so. Oh no, that one's still around. Not anymore. Make sure there's no um, Komodo thingy madoodles, Me Megalanias wanting to jump on my head. Okay. So you guys follow me, stay passive, and let's move across through here. I do remember these old ruins, and there's another explorer note here. Also grab it. Seeing the likes of Mammothus Steinkaput alongside dinosaurs is still strange. This behemoth towers over many creatures on the island and doesn't seem to fear anything but the Tyrannosaurus. I've seen them stomp would-be predators out of their way. Mammoths can grab and throw things with their powerful trunks and manage a fearsome trumpeting roar with them as well. At first, I wondered how herds of mammoths were able to find enough plant life to graze on, but then I saw them sweeping up thatch and foliage with their tusks and stomping branches out of trees. Mammoths generally thrive in colder areas and have a herd mentality. They must spend much of their time traveling between the mountain's cold summit and more lush base, and maybe their herds are the reason why the summits are so barren. Mammothus steinkaput is a difficult beast to domesticate. Not because they are inherently stubborn, but because knocking one out to begin the taming process takes great effort. Once tamed, however, mammoths are one of the only creatures on the island that can uproot trees without shattering them, and their trunks are strong enough to lift and carry survivors and other smaller creatures. Lately, Survivors have been saddling up their mammoths to ride in tandem. The more clever riders have even been outfitting their mammoth saddles with war drums. It turns out that drum solos from mammoth back can really boost your tribe mate's spirits. Drum solos from mammoth back. Yeah, we, um, next time we come in here, we should bring some Kaylee in with us. It's, it's pretty toasty in here. Oh shit, don't push me off the edge. Here, actually, let's just stay on you. Uh, we're going to try and do some polling here. does it for the bats we already killed the arthos there's a ginormous sarco in the water we'll deal with him later okay i'm gonna keep these cats up here because i don't want to risk them falling in the water here Is this uh, where we came down before? 
Yeah, because that's the Arthos. All right, so we, we could have actually brought the guides down through this way. Um, maybe we should because we still have some pretty big, mean crocodile guys to fight. Okay, everybody follow me, but stay passive for the moment. Make a nice wide turn down through here. Sylvester, you're going to piss me off. Don't go in the water. Okay. These dung beetles aren't aggressive. Okay. Nice blue lips there, buddy. So let's hop off of you. And you're on passive. I want to pull... Oh, the dung beetles. Oops. Yeah. Let's get you. I'm still keeping them, my guys on passive just because I don't want them going in the water. I, I can get them out if they do go in, but... have them here in case we get overwhelmed. There. Get out of the way. Alright, there's something else down there. It looks like it might be a stuck Sarko. Softened him up pretty good. Where did he go? Oh, he's still there. Jeez. All right. Let's... Uh, where did he go? One forty-five. No wonder it took so so many bullets to kill that guy. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Um, I think I think we'll be okay to go in the water. Famous last words, right? Uh, I I want to clear all the badness out of this pool because we got to go in this pool. Let's pop one of these and go under the water so we can see what we're doing. Still got another piranha. You guys are should be on neutral. Why are you, why are you not fighting? So the hmm. Yeah, that goes underneath the ruin. So I think this is the way forward here, but I'm not doing that without a baryonyx. Cuz that's a very if, if you're not familiar with this cave, that's a very long many underwater passages way to get to the artifact. But there are loot crates. It's worth doing if you have you know, if you're equipped for it, but we're not.
Okay, so I think we're, I think we got all the baddies. Well, okay. okay. Let's get the guys back over here. The guys and gals. Okay, so everybody be neutral except for you. No, actually, hold on. Where's Sylvester? Sylvester should be the one that they follow because he's the weakest. You stay passive. Okay, now we are going to switch into our really good armor. And hopefully we don't run into an Arthur in the last part that we got to do on foot. If we do, well, we'll deal with it. 3,333 armor. That is beautiful. Um, and let's take one of those. Let's take one of those. We already took one of those. I'm not going to take this if I don't need to because that hurts us a little bit. Okay, so now i got to remember where to go. One, one of these, there's a shortcut. Um, just in case there's more piranhas. There's a shortcut, I think it might be. Yeah, I think it's this area right here. That's a, it's like a little back way to get to the. Uh, the artifact. One of these, let's take one. Okay, there's a bat. Is that the only bat that's in here, though? And if there was ever a cave that we should have brought an otter into, it's this one. All right. Artifact of the pack. Uh, let's get a screeny here. this away. Uh, I guess I have to take that off to get it out of the picture. All right. Artifact of the pack. We got it. Just taking a peek down in the water really quick. There's a Sarko. Oh shit, Piranha. You know, if that Sarko comes out, he'll come all the way up here, but then he'll need our buckshot. Yeah, that goes down into another pool, but there's, like I said, there are loot crates in these water tunnels, but not something I want to do on foot. No, thank you. Let's get the hell out of here. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Everybody's going to follow Sylvester. Sylvester is going to be passive. And you are going to be neutral, and you need to be neutral. Okay, guys, this is where <coughs> we part ways. I will be back to see you sometime in the future, maybe. Um, and we'll run the cave again. I might bring a berry or three with me and keep them down here to keep you company, too. 
Um, so, you've got t plenty of meat. I want the Titan Bow of Venom. I'm going to give him a little scratch behind the ears. Okay. Here we go. We're on our own for the rest of the way. Um, and because of that, we're putting this armor back on. I don't like the fact that the sword has no sound to it. I could have actually just run those guys back down to the cats. But, I mean, they... Arm armors... <laughs> they hardly touched us. And the shield is just kick-ass, too. Oh, shit. All right, let's take one of these just in case. Okay. that is but I don't think we need to worry about it are you guys gonna stay stuck in there uh, yeah I think they are maybe yeah stick your face out that's a good idea yeah you too beautiful Few things are more beautiful than the sight of an onk getting its face blown off by my shotgun. True story. Once we get out of here, I think we're home free. I don't think. I don't remember any mobs spawning in up here. All right, we made it. We finally completed the Upper South Cave and got Artifact of the Pack. Oh, boy, that was a, a bit of a chore. I mean, we definitely had it covered, but it was not necessarily a walk in the park. <laughs> so now I'm pretty sure that we only have two land caves left. We have Skylord Cave, which we are going to have to do on foot. But I think uh, I think we're pretty well geared for it with this armor and shotgun. So I think we'll be fine in there. Famous last words. Um, and then, of course, the Ice Cave, which is going to be quite a bit more of an ordeal than all the rest of these caves put together. My plan for that cave, if I haven't already mentioned it, is that we're going to, we're going to take a berry army in there. Um, and see how things go. So that is going to wrap up this episode, though. So I'm going to let you guys go here. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share out the video. And we'll catch you all in the next episode. See ya.